the next phase would be the development of a pilot test project that will be implemented in uh, a selected area of Toronto, and that will be used to evaluate the economic benefits and the full cost of the project. We've done an initial estimate of those. What we would be doing is refining that estimate in the next phase to provide a more robust long-term costing for the, for the council and for funding parties going forward. The design could then be revised and created into a toolkit of information that would enable third parties and other people to deliver the system into the future to roll it out across um, Greater Toronto and potentially Hamilton areas. Um, and phase three would be the city-wide rollout of the, of the strategy based on the outcomes of phase two if it was deemed successful. So thank you very much for your attention. Um, hopefully I haven't gone on for too long and um, you don't seem to be falling asleep yet. What we'd love you to really get involved now, as Antonio said, I think he'll take over in a second, but get involved in speaking with us and looking at the board uh, and asking questions and we'll be delighted to respond to uh, any questions that you might have on the strategy. Um, and thank you very much. We'll take a couple of questions, and then there's a question over here. And I'll try and pass the mic around. Um, so hi. Uh, so you had talked about removing some of the clutter, but what about some of the already existing signage, like the giant astral media signs, for example? Like, are those just going to disappear, or do you have to keep them somehow, or integrate them with the new system? How does that work? Um, I can start start that one off off a little bit. Um, but there's a, there's a couple of people here from the city, and I'll point you to Fiona and Elise, that we can delve into more detail into some of the existing elements, like the, like the ones you mentioned. Generally speaking, this strategy starts from the premise that there's a whole series of legacy projects and contracts and, and materials out, out there. We're trying to build on that and move, move forward from that. But inevitably, there's, there's a series of momentum that's out there already. Um, the Astro Pillars is, is one of them, but there's a whole series of pieces that, that we're trying to integrate. Moving forward, the big piece um, is recognizing as new interventions happen, what are the new designs that are going to be taking place, how are we going to start thinking about the mapping, how are we going to start thinking about all of the pieces that are attached to, to, these, to these elements that are going to be designed in Phase 2 and Phase 3 as, um, as we move forward. But yeah, I encourage you, if you have kind of detailed questions on on kind of things that are really outside of the scope, there are people around here that can answer those those questions, specifically folks from the city. Yeah. Have a question here and then yeah. okay. um, Will the prototype uh, be modeled? Uh, will you use computer modeling for the prototype? Or if not, what will the media be for the prototype? What do you mean by what do you mean computer modeling? The prototypes will be physical products. So we, what, what we would do would be to design, the, the next phase of the project will be refining the strategy that's been presented today. There are two example signs included uh, as part of this um, exhibition. These are very much conceptual illustrations of how the principles could apply to a product. The detailed design work takes place in the next phase, and that would be real product, so physical, so physical signs. So those physical signs would be prototyped, possibly using full-scale cardboard mock-ups. We go and stand on the street and we'd watch what people do, and we'd see how they react, and we'd ask them questions, and we would refine the design of the information and the product through a prototyping um, exercise that allows us to evaluate the effectiveness of the design. That prototyping would then be translated into an actual sign that's installed on street, in the ground, and then that would form the pilot project. So I'm not sure, computer modeling, we would certainly do 3D visualizations. We would use um, connectivity analysis to test the assumptions in, in the strategy. Connectivity analysis analyzes the spaces between places and tells you where places are easy to find and places aren't that easy to find. And we use this technology as a means of demonstrating how well you can connect up the city through a, mul a multitude of different signing interventions. So we would use that type of computer modeling if that's what you're referring to. No, the, uh, your physical uh, um, 
Yeah, we can get that what you could call we it. We do some three D visualizations of that, and then we create some. You can't, you can't. Computers are great for lots of things, but you can't beat watching how people respond to an actual product on screen. Um, and we would create real full scale mock ups where we would stand on screen with them, possibly behind them, but maybe not all day. Um, but that, that's the type of thing that we would do to test as a prototype. Hi. Uh, so I got a number of questions, but I'll stick right. to just the most pertinent at the moment. And uh, so things that you talked about, things like incorporating, you know, the different various signage out there and whatnot. Uh, in regards to say, like for example, TTC routes or cycling maps and whatnot, um, are you going to attempt, say, with the TTC to uh, have the same style signage and uh, you know iconography and symbols on? TTC maps in the TTC versus your maps on the street, things like you know, like the you know the existing icons the TTC already uses would perhaps be the icons you use on these signs, and also things like not just showing TTC stops, but are you going to show the routes that are actually on those streets on your maps? Okay, um, TTC stops, absolutely. Um, it's a multi-level information system, and we'll be including information from other uh, other systems. Um, the this phase is not a detailed design phase, so the nature of the incorporation of information from third parties or with third parties hasn't been defined at this stage. Do you consider the TTC a third party? It's all city of Toronto. So, but, uh, you know, I'll, I'll extend that a little bit as well because the premise of a lot of what's happening here is that part of it gets delivered directly by. City and City Hall, but a lot of it is actually going to be about partnering with a whole series of different organizations and institutions, and TTC and the transit agencies are, are one example, but as well as the university, you know, U of T, the PATH system, many different um, organizations that either govern a piece of land or govern a, 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 a public areas already have wayfinding, and everybody has a different degree. BIAs are another great example. Um, and the idea would be to partner with all of these groups at different levels and depending on what each one of them needs. BIAs, for example, might be a perfect one where the city provides the base map and they add a level of detail that doesn't make sense to provide at the big wayfinding scale. TTC, the different transit agencies need to react and be responding in slightly differently. So how that mechanism happens hasn't been resolved yet. But the very principle of partnering and making sure that this is in fact about creating the transition between the different systems and the different partnerships is a key principle in how this gets delivered. Certainly want to do that. The last thing I want to add to that though is is it hard for the city and the TTC not already partners in the commission? Yeah, yeah. absolutely. No, no, absolutely. Absolutely. The the all I'm suggesting is the articulation of that hasn't been defined. Um, as I mentioned very early in the presentation, naming, in this kind of project, anywhere, naming is an enormous challenge. Agreeing what to call things and when to call them what you're calling them is, is, a, is a massive challenge and it can't be underestimated. So in an ideal world, the outcome will be that the name of a destination within a TTC station is the exact same as you'll find when you go on the street. The opportunity will be there to use the base mapping within TTC environments. The opportunity will be there for the, for the pedestrian wayfinding on the streets and corporate information from TTC and so forth. The anticipated outcome will be a shared project that will integrate across different modes and the Dixie stations and other the parties. A, a big principle is reciprocity, right? That some of the icons and symbols that each institution uses ideally get used with with a reciprocity. Other quick questions? Maybe a couple more questions and then we'll jump to the panel. Uh, do you have any uh, suggestion at this time about how much advertising will be carried on those forms? Um, it yeah. cannot, uh, uh, or would it be the same as the C information channels where there's maybe 90 or 95 percent advertising okay. and 5 percent information which like nobody will <coughs> see that? Excellent question. Thank you very much. Um, this system has been, the, the, the principles behind the design of the system is that it's non-advertising. We would not expect the system, the wayfinding system itself, 
excuse me, the reference system itself to have advertising on it. Um, there are opportunities, and this has been delivered elsewhere, for advertising to fund this kind of system. But the, the successful ones have used advertising in other areas. So one example in the UK for example, uh, would be Bristol, where the project was funded by, by one of the large advertising media companies, but that no advertising was included on the product itself. And that they were given some prime advertising spaces on highways and so forth to put on their billboards. Now there's multiple different ways of doing it. The funding mechanisms of this project haven't been um, defined as yet, but the project's been designed to be free of advertising. This is an information product, not an advertising product. Would there be eliminate? Would there be eliminate? Illuminate. Illuminate it? Uh, the, the detailed design hasn't been completed yet. The, there are certain opportunities for the signs in certain areas to be illuminated if that was considered a benefit. There are costs involved in illuminating. Um, there are opportunities for solar power illumination, for example, but in, in Toronto when you've got quite a lot of hours of darkness through the winter period, you need to manage that solar power to ensure the illumination is delivered where and when it's needed. But there are opportunities for that and it's a consideration in the project. Thank you very much. So maybe we'll take one question here and one question there. Thank you for the opportunity. Uh, so my question is regarding to the end user, which is Toronto, and it happens to be that multicultural come from different ethnic and languages and all that. I'm assuming the language here for all the information will be in English. However, um, as we've seen in the streets of Toronto, the signage, for example, around Chinatown, you get the sign that says Sadana, and below it it will say something which is Cantonese or Mandarin. And in Greektown, also the same thing. So, using the technology, is there any way that you can, I don't know, use Google Translate or something, where, let's say I have a sign over there, but I want to read it in my own language. Uh, is that possible, or is that going to be incorporated to, uh, to, to help tourists and uh, new immigrants and so on? That's a very good question, thank you very much. Um, I think there's two, different, there's two different points to this question. Core information about destinations and places should just be in the language, the local language of the place. Why would you translate church to kirche? Mm -hmm. Because it's going to be called church when you get there. Places have names and people will go to those names based on, on whatever they're called. So if we're going to have consistency of naming, that has to be in a single language. Supporting information, so interpretive information about context or historical background and so forth, um, could easily be translated through mobile technologies. There may be an appetite for major gateway welcome signs um, where you expect high density of, uh, of visitors. And the example I showed from the city of London has, um, I think, uh, Chinese, Spanish, German, French, English, not sure about Italian, but it does have a multitude of different languages. Um, but only on one or two signs. So there may be places where the city feels that there is a real benefit in providing that welcome, but where that information isn't provided, the use of QR codes, for example, will already give you that dynamically in your mobile phone. So there are there are certainly technologies that can be in, that can be um, embraced to help communicate that multi-lingual uh, requirement if it was necessary. And uh, there's some consideration as part of the project. Thank you very much. It's, it's also one of the principles to try and provide as much of the information as we can through ideograms and pictograms and, and, and graphic materials so that we minimize the verbiage and we try and, and use the graphics as a, as a key way, which is a little bit more accessible.